Hey guys, welcome back, uh, League of Inches. And after a week off uh, for the boys, I thought I'd give them a, a week off with Origin. Um, obviously, back on now. A little bit of a review of Origin the series last night, what had happened, and have a bit of a chat about the the, the week coming up. Origin players to be rested, whatnot, and um, we'll really build up now for the for the run home and quickly, obviously. Uh, we're open on to the podcast now. So if you like the podcast world, uh, seems like a lot of people are preferring that method these days. They're listening in the car, things like that. Um, basically, got notified today we're on you know, to all podcast um, channels or apps. Uh, I don't really know much about it, but I know there's Spotify. I know um, all the other ones. We're apparently on all of them now. So um, however you listen to your podcast, uh, just type in League of Inches and You'll find us there, still on the YouTube channel, and obviously still got Instagram and um, Facebook as well. So thanks for all the love that we're getting. Uh, we really do appreciate, and almost there that one thousand mark for Instagram is going to be pretty cool to to tick off. But um, look, let's get straight into it. And weapon of the week um, this week's a bit of a bit of a weird one, but I thought I'd just shout out to the games can to continue. Obviously, what's going on in Sydney. All the Sydney folk, I know Sid's down there at the moment. All us three are Queenslanders, but um, looking out for you. Uh, hopefully, everyone's been safe and not catching this, um, obviously, COVID. So, a uh, bit good work on the NRL. Can you in it? Um, Sid, down there, how is it? First of all, keeping safe um, and good to see you back and alive. Yeah, it's. Um... Yeah, we're going good. We just got to be patient, you know. We just got to stay inside. We'll be right. Um, I'm I'm working in the bank, so I'm an essential worker. Uh, there's less traffic, less and less traffic uh, aside from tradies and that, um, which is good. It's not what the media is saying. Don't worry, it's uh, it's all good in Western Sydney. Um, yeah, so we just got to do the right thing, and we'll be right. In the meantime, we don't lose footy like we did last year. So um, I 100% echo your your sentiments uh, for the game. Um, it would like a little hiatus for the players, something different, change it up. They can live in the hotel life and they can focus on their footy up uh, in the sunny state. I think your club would have liked this to have happened a week ago and they wouldn't have gotten in trouble for all hanging out. So uh, it's just, it's a week too late for your boys. Jace, you got out of Sydney before all this started. Luckily, you're up here in Queensland now, sunny, the sunny state. Um, how you, it's good to see you're back as well. What did you get up to over the week? Um, uh, nothing much really, eh? It's, uh, it's no different for me, uh, than the Sydney lockdown. I've just stayed inside the house, really. <laughs> just, uh, <laughs> I just, uh, I miss Sydney that much. I just thought I'd blend in with them and sit at home and do nothing. <laughs> not, not to promote another sport, but he's, he's got the new F1 game and he's pretty much played that on repeat and I'm pretty jealous at the moment. I'll be getting that very shortly, probably on the weekend, but I know you've been spending a few hours on that. Yeah, just a couple. Uh, pretty much every second I'm awake. <laughs> Which is a lot, guys. This guy doesn't sleep. So uh, if you see someone commenting on our statuses at about 3 o'clock in the morning, it's no doubt him. Uh, look, Dane, um, I don't know where you've been. You've just been out and about celebrating Roosters wins and losses and we can't keep up with you. Uh, let us know how you've been and um, you're obviously away from the Sydney life as well, so I know COVID drama's up here for you. Yeah, no, look, I've just been doing whatever I feel like doing, napping during the day, um, on the weekends and stuff, and, yeah, just taking it easy. Just uh, I'm glad that I'm not in Sydney. I'd hate to be in that lockdown um, environment. You know, we've had some short lockdowns up here, but and I know Sid's supposed to be inside, but he's doing an essential thing at the moment, doing this podcast and, and video with us. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm awesome. keen to come over and visit Jason and, um, yeah, challenge him on that F1 game. That's the first I've heard about it. So, yeah, I'm ready to step up for you. Oh, look, yeah, we've started something here. Um, what do you make of the bubble? Uh, happy that it's it's continuing on. Um, you Queensland boys didn't mention it, but... Um, Obviously, it's probably the best place for them to be at the moment is the, the Gold Coast, Brisbane and, and Sunny Coast hubs. Yeah, I, I, I definitely agree. Like they, they've, they've made a lot of sacrifices 
with their family and that. So, you know, hats off to them for doing it just to keep the game going. So um, thank you to all the players for actually doing it and keeping the game alive. And news of tonight, if no one's heard, but um, I've just heard that Melbourne's coming up now as well. So they're about to go into a five-day snap lockdown in Victoria. So they'll no doubt come up to the sunny coast. Uh, look, we, we haven't done one of these before, but I thought I'd bring in a new segment. Now they've got the podcast world. I thought, why not? Uh, I've got the face palm moment of the week. So this is going to be a new one where you just think, you know, what what are they thinking? And I think it has to go to Jai Arrow. Obviously, that was late last week, but it's still in sort of this week. And uh, it, that's the massive face palm moment for me. Four days or three days after the Dragons incident, you'd think that all players would be on edge and just think, no, nah, I'm just going to be on my best behaviour. This bloke not only does the dirty on his missus, um, but does it dirty on his teammates and, and himself. So, Sid, what were you thinking when this news came out? Yeah, pretty pretty silly. Um, look, they don't, I, don't, I don't know what goes through these blokes' heads, you know. Um, I, I'm, I understand, you know, people, people want to live their life and have their needs, but we all do. Um, and we've just got to be patient. It's just a, a small thing. Um, and, and, and look, I don't know what's going through his head. As I say, I mean, he cost himself whatever he cost himself, two games plus a fine, but people are forgetting. He also cost himself an origin jersey with 50 grand extra. That's outside the salary cap as well. 50 grand a game. I mean, well, how dumb can you be? No, nah, that's a face slap, all right? No, oh, it, it's just absolutely. You know, I actually put this one down as been worse off than the, the Dragons one just because he knew it already. It was just, I just couldn't believe it. Dane, what do you think? Because it's just, as a Lee fan, I said it on a, another um, guy's video, but it's just, it gets to the point where it's so hard to defend these players. Yeah, look, I just think they just don't, they seriously don't learn. They get these opportunities, not just to play first grade football, uh, which, you know, some kids and, and some other, you know, players would, would dream to be in their position and get the money that they get paid. And then just to abuse that and, yeah, it just, you know, puts the game in disrepute really. Like, it's it's so grubby. Like, I think we should um, do a GoFundMe page and just, I don't know, throw some blow-up dolls in some of those quarantine hotels or something like that just to keep them all, you know, keep them more intimately sound. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where to go. You're a man of ideas. You're a man of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> There's always uh, solutions to every problem. Look, maybe we can go get an adult sort of sponsor the the NRL. Maybe that's the new way to go. So, um, get these betting agencies away. Let's let us look at the um, adult stores. But Jace, you've probably been the closest out of all of us to the the full time proper. Rugby league gig, um, no doubt. Look, you, you love to spruik yourself, but you used to be a pretty bit of a talent with a mohawk. Um, would you be able to handle if someone told you you had to stay in a bubble for four weeks and hang around your teammates, things like that? You reckon you'd be able to do it? Mate, we we pretty much did that uh, as a team when, when we played the uh, University World Cup back in 2008. It really wasn't that hard. Um, when it comes to Jai Arrow's situation, he, he wasn't in there for weeks. He was in there for a week or so. But, like, more than anything, like, a lot of these players need to be held accountable by their teammates, their peers. And I think it, it comes to the point where, you know, for them, it's just a, you know, a show of who's more macho, who can pull a girl, who can break the rules, who can do this, who can do that and try and get away with it. Like, it's the, the other players, especially his teammates and the other players around the league need to hold him accountable and let him know what he's messed up with here. Yeah, 100%. And look, let, let's move this on now. We've had our moments to just have a go. It's just been crazy. But the Origin Series, it's, it's time to do the review. We'll spend... A few minutes to have a bit of an open discussion, boys. So just talk up about whatever you sort of want to talk about. No real agenda here. But um, look, obviously, fair to say last night from a New South Wales point of view was probably a bit disappointing. Let's touch on the that last night's game first um, before we talk about the series overall. Uh, look, obviously, New South Wales lost. Um, a few players have been singled out since then. Um, I'll say my piece afterwards that you guys go first on it. But 
I also just think that the refereeing being there live was pretty poor. Um, I felt like he was a lot harsher on the Blues than he was Queensland. Um, and he basically was trying to be the main actor of, of a play that had nothing to do with him. So he was trying to take over and he really ref, ref the game as if it was just a normal game. And we all know that's not the case. And I think I heard on the radio this morning, it was 21 60 goes and penalties all up, which is crazy to think for an origin game, which averages normally, what, five, maybe six in the whole game. So um, there was so much stop starting. There was just no rhythm. Uh, and for mine, New South Wales getting pinned a lot more. Uh, Queensland did a similar thing and wouldn't get penalised at all. It was sort of, they were allowed to put a sleeping bag all over New South Wales and just fall asleep. So see what you make of last night. Um, pretty vocal in the chat. Um, what do you make of it? Oh man, you, you said you said most of it. Um, I, I, look, we don't like to get controversial and or negative uh, in regards to the game, but Blind Freddy could say, Freddy, no pun intended, pretty fit love, but Blind Freddy could say that Queen, the ref was trying to um, to give Queensland a leg up. He tried in the first game, he tried in the second game, tried a little bit in the first game, tried a lot in the second game. Um, and he tried in the third game. Uh, the third game, we obviously lost our halves, um, and 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 that brought him a little bit closer. Queensland slightly improved with with Ponga back as well, um, and Hunt at hooker, bit of speed out of hooker because McCulloch was way too slow, um, and and yeah, but it was yeah, no, it was pretty obvious that we should have still beat him put it that way. Yeah, you do mention that. I think last night I also showed, and uh, I mentioned to my mate that I was there with, how much we missed and how much of an influence Cleary and Luai have at the moment and just how good they are, to, not just together, but as just players themselves. And uh, Moses has obviously gone under a bit of um, pressure and some people were uh, saying what he was doing wrong. Um, for mine, I, I thought Whiten was probably the worst of the two, um, especially being there. There was lots of times with Toe and... Um, Latrell were pretty much unmarked or able to, I reckon, just give him the ball and Whiten for some reason has lost. It's like all of a sudden he doesn't know how to pass. Um, but to be fair, I don't think he's been in form all, all year. Dane, I know you were around a lot of Queenslanders last night, um, so probably was, was copping it. But from what you could watch um, before you probably lost your, your shit, <laughs> uh, what what do you make of the the, the game last night? Yeah, look, I'd have to say it's one of the first Origin games that I haven't really enjoyed or been that engaged in. A um, few reasons for that is being around one-eyed Queensland supporters is one. Yeah, shout um, out to they, you know, they get so excited when they're 10 metres out. It's it's almost like they've already scored. <laughs> um, the refereeing was poor, but I, I think New South Wales really hurt with you know not having Cleary and Luai there. White and Moses just weren't a good combination. I think Moses had a lot more to offer, but I just don't think he could he could showcase that. I think he gave it his all. Um, yeah, refereeing was was poor. My multis went down the gurgler. Uh, my perfect <laughs> round went down the gurgler. Just really wasn't hasn't been a good week for me. So, um, and and I think sports bet uh, they should probably bring in how many whistle how many whistles will be blown. Um, throughout the game, so you can put that into a multi as well. So just remember, gamble responsibly as well. But um, yeah, I look, I look forward to a, a different next year, and I just hope that we've got a full, full strengths, uh, you know, healthy squad on the park, and we can just give them a clean sweep. Right, honestly, mate, you could find odds for anything. You'd have you'd ask sports bet to find odds for the length of the grass for the night, and you'd put a bet on it. So um... I'll throw a fiver on it. I'll have a go. <laughs> Jace, what are you making of the game? Um, anything uh, else you need to add or anything you want to go deeper uh, into? Because go for uh, it. I think uh, the main thing is the refing. It, it was really poor. He, he stole the limelight pretty much from the players and he took the game out of the players' hands. Um, secondly, I think New South Wales' uh, standpoint, like it, it, they lack the go forward early that uh, they, they, they had uh, in the first two games. I think the biggest mistake we had was keeping Payne Haas on the bench and starting for Nukin. I think they should have done it the other way around because you could see when Payne Haas came on in his first stint, he was just destroying them up through the middle. 
Um, they should have just started with that mm -hmm. and kept Finucane for when the Fords got a bit more tired so he could use his footwork around the ruck. Um, I think that's where they fell short. And obviously the halves as well, you know, we, we harp on about it, but yeah, they just weren't a good fit. You know, Whiten has a good running game and, and he showed that. But he he lacked that passing game, uh, which he used to have in the past. I, I don't know. I don't really know where it's gone. Um, other than that, man, like it's Queensland. Just you know, they came away with the chalkies. They did what they had to do, and they got got the win. But also, just on another note, is it me or is Cam Munster a protected species now? Like there was twice in the game where the ball, like a New South Wales player, was getting up to play the ball, and he's lent in and like need him in the head. Like, it's like, what, four weeks, like, four different incidents where he's kicked someone and need people, and he never gets anything. He gets away with a fine. Like, what's the go with this guy? Right. Pr protected species. Let's just call it out. Let's call it as it is. That's what we do here. Uh, that's I'm what calling we're you out, Monster. C come and have a go, because I'll flog <laughs> you. You're a grub. Last week, it was Cherry Evans. This week, we're calling out Munster. Like, honestly, <laughs> players, we're, we're, not, we're not messing around at League of Inches. We're just going to call you all out. Um, but yeah, the see. whole Queensland team to Dane's house. We'll flog them all. <laughs> <laughs> Dane will get out and bloody start egging them. So, uh, look, uh, uh, <laughs> Sid's gone. Um, but it's, it's one of those... It's hard to talk because... I get the halves, and the thing is, watching it live last night, I don't think a lot of people at home got to see this, but the one thing I didn't get was it looked like they gave White in the chief playmaking role, which when you've got a halfback there, I thought that be the, he'd be the chief playmaker because every time White would call for the ball and uh, Moses has something set up with Turbo and everything, uh, they'd go that way. They'd go to White and, and he'd over, overrun the call, which... Um, I just, I just, I couldn't get. It just kept going left for some reason. And for mine, when you've got Turbo up against the guy on debut, Happy uh, Tabasai Fido, um, I'd be going to him every time because he's not as noted centre. And I think Turbo would have run rings around him, but we just didn't seem to, to do much about that. So what about the series? But obviously, Blues ended up winning it. So let's not go too much into last night. The, the ref obviously had his Queensland jersey on, but... The Blues won it. Well, it's just it was they were too good. Um, it's just a let's call a spade a spade. Uh, Sid, if you had to give a three, two, one, um, what well, who would it be? Um, and any any other notes for the series? Um, yeah, it's a, it's a close one, the three, two, one. But across all the games, I'd have to say the best uh, performers is Latrell Mitchell across all the games. Um, he's my he's my he's my best for sure. Turbo second. Um, it's already two fullbacks that are better than our actual fullback, by the way. Um, yeah, Kadensko with his pirouettes. How many circles did he do last night? I don't even know. He must be dizzy. Um, and the one, oh, it's a tough one. I would say Payne Huss is the is the one. And you know, again, averaging it across performance of the of all three games. Yeah, he was a bit of a pain in the house, wasn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! You, you, let me. I just want to bring this back for a second, Sid, because a lot of viewers out there are probably thinking, "Have something against Tedesco?" Because uh, you have been critical of him in the past, and you were critical at the start of the um, series, I believe. When we did our team, you didn't even have him in the in the blue side, if I believe. Correct. It's more a jealousy so, thing, Joel. So. Is that what it is? Because I want to know if Tedesco's not in the side, who are you putting fullback and who are you putting in the centre? Because I think all around is a well balanced side. I think Tedesco last night missed Cleary and Luai a lot because the first two games, I think Tedesco was up there with our better players. So, what is it? What do you have yeah. against Tedesco? I, I think, wait, just to, <laughs> he missed them. I, I know he missed them because he kept looking for him. He kept turning around looking for him. He couldn't find them. That's why he was doing all those circles. <laughs> but um, look, the bottom line is the best fullback who is in white hot form, career best. He's just like like you like you rightly pointed out the the Jared Hayne, um, two thousand nine, Ben Barber, two thousand fourteen. When they're that good, they're going that good. In their best position, you know. Uh, Turbo is the, the the best fullback going around right now. Second best is Latrell. 
maybe a distant third is, is Tedesco on form. Nothing against him. The guy doesn't pass. He's doing circles all the time. He always falls into to tackles and gets high tackle. You know, I'm just talking about form here. It wasn't too long ago that we called him the best, and I even said the best player in the world. But he's he's gone down, and and you know we've paid for it. I reckon he was a big part of that loss too because he kept pirouetting and and going away from his support, and then they'd run past him. When you run backwards, your support players are gone. They were they were running onto the ball. So nothing against him, but the way he's playing, nah. I will agree with that bit of it. I think he was a bit stop start a lot last night, and that was. A big reason why our attack was so plagued and really stopped start. Dane, I'll let you go first here because you're the Roosters fan. I'll let you go back at Sid first of all um, and why you think Tedesco is so good and then give us your 3-2-1. Yeah, look, I, I have to agree with Sid. I think Teddy's form has been down a bit. I think if, um, if Turbo holds this form leading into next year's Origin Series, I think... Fittler's got a, a real headache because I would – I don't know what you do with Teddy, but I would have Turbo in there if he holds his form all the way through to next origin. But, yeah, he, he, he's been a bit lost. He just hasn't been able to play that free-running game that he normally plays. Like, he, he really has looked a bit lost and he just hasn't been as devastating and, you know, tackle-breaking as what he has been over the last, you know, sort of few years prior. So I'd have to agree with that. My three, two, one. Um, I'd have to say Latrell Mitchell. He was a standout at Origin. I'd have to give two to. I think Cleary was good, even though he only played two games. I'd be looking at the whole series. And then my one, I'd have to give it to Turbo. Yeah, nice. Chase, what are you thinking so far? Um, are you making any changes to the blue side for next year already? And who's your 3 2 1? No, I don't think I'd make any changes to the blue side. Uh, maybe a couple of players around on the bench. Um, on the Tedesco issue, I think for him, is when he has a pretty decent halfback playing with him, like you saw it the last couple of years, you know, Cooper Cronk, uh, Keary, you know, the, and then. He, through origin, you have he has Cleary. You see him, he plays really well when he's got that really good, you know, top line half there. But, you know, this season, club wise, he's had Sam Walker the whole way through, who's sort of just more of an ad lib type uh, half. So I think that's his biggest uh, downfall. That's why he's dropped so much this year. Um, when it comes to my three, two, ones, I'm going to have to go three, would have to be Latrell. Um, Two, Turbo, and one, I think, uh, Cam Murray, for one. He he just tackles nonstop. He tackles anything that moves. Even if he had both arms amputated, he'd still make 50 tackles. Yeah, it's, a, it's one of those. I'll go uh, – yeah, I'm going to go three. I'm going to go Latrell as well. I just thought his series is fantastic. I thought he really stepped up. And there was people asking at the start of it why he was getting picked and he should have – he's burned his bridges. But I really think he's – one of the best players in the comp. Turbo for mine too. Um, I'm actually going to stick with Teddy. I'm going to go solid and, get, and have him as one. I thought he was good the first two games. Uh, as Jason's rightly pointed out, he really just really missed that that controlling playmaker. Because once he has to start thinking about some ball playing, I don't. I think that takes off what he's good at, and that's the going around the rock, uh, going off the offloads from the big forwards like your junior Paulos and things like that. And um, he didn't get to do much of that last night because I think he tried to organise a bit too much. What about the Queensland side, but boys, uh, they they pretty much got smashed. I know they won last night, but they've it's a record um, losing uh, defeat margin in the three games. So um, what changes uh, would you make that you can think of the top of your head, Sid, for Queensland next year? Oh, well. Um, and do, would... you, do you keep Paul Green as coach is the second part? No, oh, that's a good. That's a good change. That will start. That one. That one's an easy one. That's a no. We got to get rid of Paul Green. He's not. He's not good enough. He's. he's I should have added him to my pretender list at the start of the year. Um, you know, he had Thurston when he won the comp. As soon as Thurston retired, he couldn't do anything. And they had a decent side. You know, they still had a good side. Um, but yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not sold on Paul Green. Um, he's not. He's not good. Uh, not good enough. Um, as far as the side itself, just thinking off the top of my head, um, they need to look at 
they need to look at getting just just keeping players in their position. The tricky thing is that AJ Brimson and and Ponga are two of their best players, probably their top five players in ability, and they both play the same position. If one of them can, you know, slot in somewhere else, or you know, otherwise AJ is going to have to stay the fourteen, um, and and Hunt needs to stay at hooker. Um, I can't, yeah, I can't see. It. Maybe just get another centre. I think Tabi Ifedo did all right, even though he's a winger. Um, Maybe just get in, get in another centre. They've got to look around. They've got to, they've got to find some talent. It's gonna, to, gonna to be difficult. They don't have the depth that we have. I'll bring Harry Grant back next year as well. Um, he'll probably start, and Ben Hunt will probably be the fourteen. I'm imagining. Um, Dane, you're the Roosters man. Is it too early to say you're blood and walking next year? Um, and does Terry Evans get the flick, and that's his time done? Um, or do you give Walker one more year? You're almost a mind reader. Um, I'd get rid of Green. <clears throat> Let's just get that out of the way. Get rid of Cherry Evans. He's a flog. I'm calling you out again, DCE. Have a go. He's got to go. He's so predictable. Um, Walker's too too raw. He, he needs he needs another year. He showed some good um, some good talent early on in the season for the Roosters, but you know the longer you stay in the top league and you're playing with the big boys and you know it's faster and it's harder and I think he struggled a little bit. Um, I'd probably put Ben Hunt in half. Like, I know he's sort of floated around. He probably plays better at hooker. What else have they got? Ponga adds heaps of value to Queensland, but they've got to get rid of DCE. I don't think they will because he's been captain and, you know, yes, he's a leader and he's experienced. And I just don't think he's up to first grade footy. I just think he's rubbish. That's 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 my, um, my take. Uh, I'm with you, DCE. You're a flog. So if you listen to League of Inches, you're a dead set flog. Tag him in the video, you flog. Um, Jace, do you have anything else to add just to calm us down and let us move on from Origin? Origin, after your final say on this channel, is dead. Okay. Uh, firstly, yeah, Paul Green, uh, he can go. He, I think he definitely needs to go. Um, Player-wise, like I hope they don't make any changes because then we can sweep them next year. But if, if they had to, I would start with, I think, um, yeah, flick DCE, give uh, Hunter go at half because Harry Grant will come back in. Uh, but they need to they, – they just didn't have strike out wide. They need centres, like out and out centres. They've always had them in the past and that's what's always got them through. Um, they need to push Gagai out to a wing. He's, when he's in Souths mode, he's absolute garbage. But when he comes to Queensland and he's playing on the wing, he destroys our hopes all the time. He, he scores those tries that, you know, most of the time you're not expecting him to score. Um, so, yeah, they just definitely need to get actual senses. Yeah, well, there you go, guys. Uh, origin for 2021 for League of Inches is done. Um, no more talk about it. We're, we're moved on for the run home. Um, basically, this video turned into just an origin review, but we'll go quickly through just a couple of the big games that are coming out this week. And obviously, first off, kick off with the, I think, Titans Eels. Um, Seabus Stadium is probably one of the closer games of the week. Um, who are we tipping here, boys? Sid? Um, I'm going to go with Eels. Titans can score, but their defense is just so bad. Yeah, uh, Dane. Yeah, I'm going to go Eels by 14. Ooh, that was a very low uh, voice there, but that, that's all good. Jace? <laughs> uh, I'll throw a spanner in the works and say Titans. Mitch Moses goes back with a shattered dream and, uh, and he's going to be playing on low confidence. No, I don't think Moses is going to be playing tomorrow. I think it's Jacob Arthur, so they'll, they'll rest mm -hmm. Moses. Um, Even better. <laughs> we'll go. We'll go. Manly Dragons. Um, Seabus Stadium double header. Oh, Who sorry. I'm going. Fight? I'm going Eels. Um, I'm sticking strong. Go the boys. Uh, Manly Dragons. So six versus seventh on the ladder. So it should be a good game. But at the moment, these teams are streets apart. So um, I'll go first to you. Manly by twenty. Even without Turbo, they'll they'll cream the Dragons. Um, Jace. Yeah, Manly Dragons are going to be missing a few people with those suspensions. So, yeah, I'm going to go Manly. They'll, they'll probably have to take a leaf out of Jimmy Maloney's book soon, the Dragons, and start barbecuing alone. Uh, Dane? 
Um, Manly by 36. <laughs> oh, no. That's okay. Sid, does your team have any hope? And don't give us an SA response, please. Oh, well, I don't need one. We're, we're going to win. It'll be, <laughs> that'll be the bet of the week. We're going to beat them. Are you going to Paul Vaughan's place to have a barbecue and watch the game? or? <laughs> You know what? I don't. I don't hang around with unemployed people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, um, well. Moving down, Raiders Sharks is another one I think is going to be pretty close. Um, they're only two points separate both of these sides, and Sharks are in the eight. So it's weird to think if Raiders get a, a win or two, they're actually in the eight. Uh, Sid, who you got here? Sharks. Dane. Yeah, I'm going to go Sharks. I think the Raiders are down on confidence. And Ricky Stewart, you're a flog. <laughs> They've got a record three flogs in a night. Jason? Uh, I have to go Raiders, mate, or else I won't have a house to sleep in. Oh, I'm actually with you here, Jace. I think the Raiders will win this. Um, I think last week gave them a little bit of confidence, and I think they might start coming back a bit here. Um, the other last game I'll, I'll touch on is Broncos-Tigers. Um 15th versus 14th, so it's a pretty boring game if you look at it that way, but I think it's going to be pretty close, so I thought I'd chuck it in here. Um, I'm, going to go, I'm going to go Broncos at home with a bit of um, just, I don't know, a bit of confidence after that last win. They haven't won, won many in the last two years, so they might be going, you know what, we've got a chance to get two here. Um, and the Tigers for minor shot, they uh, just need a huge clean out. Uh, Jace. Yeah, I'm going Broncos. I, I think um, they're just they're probably in better shape than Tigers at the moment. So yeah, if Payne Haas backs up, he'll probably end up scoring a hat trick himself because the Tigers forward pack is soft. A full bunch of flogs. The whole forward pack. Dane, <laughs> um, I'm going to go a thousand on um, under forty four and a half points because they they're, they're attached shit both teams. <laughs> what about your tip? We don't want your bet. <laughs> oh, I'll go the Broncos. Yeah, nice, Sid. Um, I've had tr- I've been in trouble for back in the Tigers. They, they, they build you up and they let you down. I'm, uh, but Broncos are just terrible as well. So I'm going to go with a, a draw. <laughs> oh, look, yeah, we've done the we've had a draw. draw. Tip. <laughs> Is that after the Golden look- Point as well? Are you going full time draw? Yeah, yeah, because they're both going to miss their, their field goals. Oh, well, yeah, well, when you got yeah. Luke Brooks as your halfback, it's probably likely. So, uh, look, I think we should stop it here. We've caught out enough players tonight, boys. We've really ramped it up tonight. It's It's been one of those videos where we came in a bit, bit flat, a bit soft, and we've ended it on, on a high. We're ready to just go out swinging. So, cheers, and Luke boys. Brooks, you're a flog too. <laughs> we've got an absolute record. We've got flogs left, right, and centre. We've got a whole forward pack of them. Um, look, I'm glad they're in a bubble at the moment because they're up here. They'd probably come and sort us out. Um, Sid, good luck to <laughs> your dragons. From, it's went from a state of origin review to a flog review. <laughs> it's, yeah, well, <laughs> League of flogs. It, it, it's sort of like Oprah. You're a flog. You're a flog. Everyone's a flog. So, um, look, guys, <laughs> you're not flogs who tune into us. You're all absolute legends. We love you. I hope you had a bit of a laugh with this one. It's been a bit of fun and... Uh, we'll be back to series next week. This one was just sort of one of those. We're back. We're, we're all happy and giddy. So um, go enjoy the content. As I said, podcast. Don't forget, go give us a follow on all the podcasts that you listen to uh, and enjoy the week of footy.